Seven's big league cameras at the MCG for quite an historic day. It's the double header, and this is the first game between the Demons and the Cats, Melbourne and Geelong, in absolutely ideal conditions. Burke tries to get it out, but uh, Stretch walks away. He's forced to give it back to the umpire, and we'll see another bounce. Well, the ground's in wonderful condition. It looks a little dark there in the middle, but as you can see by that bounce, there's certainly nothing wrong with the centre square. And it will be Andrew Buse, the little Geelong plumber, that's going to put the Cats into attack for the first time. He goes short to the half-forward line, and there he finds his teammate in Terry Bright. Bright should go long, does so. Mossop can't take the mark, tries to butter up again. The hurried kick gathers little distance. Zantuck pushed out of it, goes to ground. They all pile in on top, and the umpire has plucked one out. And it will go to Melbourne's David Alday. Well, he had a big day last week. Here's Robbie Flower, birthday boy during the week, turned 31, and a great champion. That kick over the line at the centre wing. A couple of interesting banners as the play players from both sides ran out onto the ground, Bob. You loved the Melbourne ones then, didn't you? Well, they made their intentions clear. Lick what them the Melbourne pussies. Ones say? Lick them pussies as Flower again. Does well. To the left half forward flank. Should be a free kick going the way of Francesco Rogolo. Used his body well then, Sandy, and uh, really put himself in front, came back against Hocking and used his body beautifully. So, Rogolo from the left half forward flank. Going in towards the pocket, a nice kick, a good pass, and Healy will kick from just in front of the 50 metre line. And a statistician, Kevin O'Neill, was suggesting that it's a, such a grand day, we should be seeing those flannel gentlemen out here. But that'll give you an idea of just how good it is. He spears that one in. It won't come back enough. It'll drift into the square. Cordner was the fly from behind, and eventually it's tapped over for one behind. So, the first score on the board, and it goes the way of the Demons. We need to see, uh, Sandy, whether, whether or not uh, Geelong make a move, because uh, they've got... At the moment, Bright playing on the wing and Hockey, who was selected on the wing, playing on the um, half back flank because they've picked up the players that were selected there. But that's not the way they've lined up, so we'll just see whether they stay there. Bright. Neil, playing his 200th game, gets a bad bounce. Oh, here's a chance for Christensen, but he gets claimed by Robin White. All day also is claimed. Still a chance uh, for the Cats to go forward. It's Fitzgerald in towards the pocket. But once again, Batterston receiving the hand pass. Goes short. It's a poor kick. Now, who's the bounce going to favour? It could end up with Gary Lyon. He slips at the critical stage. Still gets it across to Connolly. Connolly's kick across the centre. A race now for Healy. He's away from Neil, but he gets a shocking bounce. He gets good support from Danny Hughes. Back over the top towards Healy. Tucked in the pocket. And a good smother. Sees that ball over the line. And a throw in to take place. Some 25 metres out from the Demon scoring zone. Scratcher playing game number 200. It's been a long road for him. No one able to get it out clearly. Eventually shoveled forward by Healy. He's going backwards. Gets the handball across to Batterston. Back to Healy. And now Flower intercepts and he takes it. He'll go on with a sweeping hand pass. It's wide towards Rigolo. Can he pick it up? It's a nasty angle, but he spears it in towards Paul Tor, where it's pushed defensively over the line, and one point only by Craig Cleave. So Cleave to bring the ball back into play. The Demons have two points on the board. Can they carry on that wonderful form they displayed last week? Perhaps it's a lack of talking there. Flower had the chance to come from the line. Gets edged out. Line tackled too high. And will be free to. So it's Gary Lyon now from the centre wing. Lyon trying to put the ball forward. Going a oh, beautiful kick by Lyon. Over the back it comes at centre half forward. Batterson takes possession. Can he get the hand pass in towards Stretch? Does so. Stretch picks the ball up. Now the hand pass back towards Connolly. Connolly straightens up, goes goalward, but he's offline once again. And one more point. So Melbourne. With that point by Chris Connolly, take their score to three consecutive behinds. So there's Connolly, number 22, 
And Terry Bright to kick out from full back. Bright. Puts it wide. Burke couldn't take the mark. It's picked up by Andrew Hughes. Hughes comes forward. Has the luxury of two. Now three bounces. Good He's shepherding. still coming forward. Four. Takes his time. Goes long. Mark. Should be paid for mine. Certainly a mark. And it looked like Fitzgerald to me. And so young Fitzgerald goes back and will have... I would suggest Sandy his first kick on the MCG and it's one point hits the post. Yes, looks different out of tennis gear, doesn't he, John Fitzgerald? But there it is, a behind on the board and incidentally the Cats' first score. The Demons are quick to bring it back into play. Had a fine start, but that's a four. A oh, good mark, Sandy, but taken by Hocking across now to Couch. Couch drives the ball long and forward. An awkward bounce that time for Richards. So too with but uh, Jarrett tapped on. Beautiful play by Jarrett. Tapped it out to Zantuck. Zantuck finds Batterson. Nobody to kick to, though, for Batterson. And in the back pocket, he has to wait. Wait he does. Drives it towards half-back. White was up from behind. Couldn't take the mark. Flower leads in the race for the ball. Very close to the boundary line. He keeps it in play. Still there. It's Johnson who takes the ball forward to Connolly. Melbourne doing well as Chris Connolly puts the ball towards half-forward. Tapped on by Hughes with the big punch of Schultz. Put it the other way. Taken by Burke. He got it out to Couch. In the back, it should have been to Couch. Tapped away by Johnson. Lyon couldn't take possession. Kicked off the ground by Burke. It runs past. Christensen coming in for Melbourne, or for Geelong, I should say. Leaves the ball. Morgan coming in. So too, Yates. And the bounce will take place. The bounce very close to the point of the centre square. More, Moss up in there. Connolly coming through. It's picked up by Batterson. Batterson floats the ball forward and Hughes takes a good strong mark. So Danny Hughes playing at centre half forward after being selected at full forward. Drives it towards centre half forward position. Lenahan outmaneuvered Wilson. A beautiful shepherd against Wilson. A hip and shoulder puts Wilson to ground. But that was a lovely shepherd by Craig Cleave. There was nothing wrong with that at all. Wilson still on the ground, not on camera. But uh, back behind play, Wilson in the hands of the trainers after a beautiful shepherd from Craig Clee. So throw in. Couch, who's been in very good form in recent weeks. I don't know what's going on with our technical facilities, Bob. I can't hear a thing, so I don't even know if I'm talking at the moment. But we'll allow play get to go on, and hopefully something will be done about it. Because uh, Wilson is up going to be okay. Burke to the Melbourne half forward line. Rigolo is the tackler. Bright the defender. Does it well. And Bright is now in the half back line. Sandy Hocking is on the, the wing now. Couch gets the hand pass across. Well they're persisting with it and at the moment it's coming unstuck. Stretch. Former South Australian to another one. Danny Hughes. They're everywhere. Lucky's counted, Sandy. He'll <laughs> oh, it's a lovely pass to Cook. Big turns. Well, great tradition with the, the Cordner family at this club. David's father, Ted, is here. And Uncle Dennis also here today. And... Uh, Gordon has kicked once again offline, and so Melbourne with four straight behinds, Geelong with one behind, so, so far the total scoring is five straight behinds. Lenahan putting the ball back into play. What a nice kick. It's down by Christensen, taps it back well away from Flower. Marty Christensen played that one well. Good play, Christensen. He goes in towards the centre. White was up high, couldn't take it. Gary Ablett comes through, traps it beautifully. Payne putting him under pressure, but Ablett's equal to the task. Payne does well, though, to force a kick off the side of the boot. 
Richards also does well to drive the ball forward. Comes on after it. Good play, Richards. He caught one too high, and so Richards should take the free kick. And Gary Ablett saying, yes, I do agree with it. I did cop him a little high. Nothing nasty about it, but kick nonetheless as Payne takes the kick. He's got plenty of time now. He steadies. Puts it over the centre wing, up towards half forward. That could be against Hughes. No, it's called play on as Ravalo takes a hand pass. It's almost taken by Healy. Neil is there. Tackled too high. Full play on by the umpire. There'll be a bounce to take place. The ball cannot get clear. And so we'll find the bounce to take place about 55 metres out from the Melbourne goal. And the Demons, Bob, showing a lot of determination in these opening minutes. He's played well so far. Certainly yep. they probably deserve a little bit more than the four points they've got on the board. He kicked it too long. And Fitzgerald puts the ball forward. Healy. It's kick smothered off the boot. Good play by White. Tapped the ball back. Yates comes through. Puts it across the ground. Marty Christensen takes the mark. Plays on immediately, directs the ball back in towards the centre. Hocking takes it well, smothered the head, right. smothered, but Hocking recovered. Oh, Beautiful right. play by Alan Johnson to Patterson. On to Zanta. Flower taps the ball on. A chance of a goal coming up. No, he didn't go for the goal. Went for the pass. It was too far. And I think in a situation like that, I would have rather seen Robbie Flower go for goal because I know how good Flower is on the run. It was very surprising, wasn't it, to see him uh, dispose of the ball in that fashion because uh, I agree with you. Watching him on the run, he's deadly. But they've got in their attacking zone, the Demons. Can they convert? Hughes is there. Can't do anything with it. And uh, the umpire will come in and decide upon a bounce. Just 25 metres out from the Demons scoring zone. They've got four behinds on the board at the moment. Another ball up to take place. Some people might call this uh, game a battle of the losers, but it's very important for both sides. Bright in all sorts of trouble. Out wide is the Scratcher 200 gamer. and Well done, Scratcher, as he finds Paul Couch. So the Cats out of trouble. And I mentioned the importance of this game because both of them have won only five for the season. And I think uh, they'd rather... That means they've lost 13. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> like anyone, you'd rather finish 10th and 11th on the, on the ladder. Ablett can't take it. Christensen, play on is the call. Kicked in towards full forward, but Richards is there. And Fitzgerald's kick. He was under pressure when he kicked it. He was being tagged. Couch can't take it. And once again, Geelong are able to set it up short to Buse. Andrew Buse on the edge of the square. By Richards, but I think it's a free kick. Payne was hanging on to him and so Ablett from only 20 metres out directly in front should I believe bring up first goal of the game directly in front Geelong go to the front one goal one seven points a three point margin over Melbourne four straight behind so, young Payne did an excellent job, I thought, up in Sydney against Warwick Kappa. Kappa kicked five, um, but in a side that was beaten by 20 goals to, to hold Kappa to five on that occasion was a pretty good effort by Young Payne. But on that occasion, against Gary Ablett, he did make the mistake of man. We do apologise, but we appear to be having awful problems technically. It looks like Zantuck that went down as he got a kick. Now, uh, well, it will be downfield. Down, he is not moving. He is not moving. Neil can't take it. Healy 
a hand pass clear. He's still on the ground, Zantuck. It's scooped over by Wilson. And with him was White. And uh, well, there he is now. Was the uh, not quite a, that's a tackle too high. Dear. He doesn't look too good at the moment. Views puts the ball forward to half forward. Kicked off the ground by Morgan. Couch gets a hand pass out to Neil. Neil puts a high kick in the air. An awkward oh. one to mark. It almost was by Yates. Picked up by Boss. Boss pushed in the back for mine. A hand pass comes from Morgan out to Hocking. Another goal coming up as Hocking puts it forward. And Geelong have two on the board. Two goals, one, 13. Melbourne, four straight behind. So Steve Hocking kicks his first. And as Bobby said, the Cats second. Zantuck's still out there, Sandy. That's Hocking uh, kicked the goal and Stephen Stretch both playing on the wing. Uh, Zantuck, I think, has refused to come off. And uh, looks as though he's moving okay. It's a centre bounce. He's having a bit of a chat with John Fitzgerald, his opponent. From the bounce, the Haas Christensen. Zantuck's in there again, played by Christensen. You reckon he's not having a fair start to the day? Down towards Ablett, picks it up on the half volley, loses it. Payne tackles him, he still gets his kick. Payne's wearing him like a glove at the moment, and uh, it goes over the line in Geelong's left forward pocket. But after Melbourne had done the bulk of the attacking in the opening 10 minutes, this last seven minutes has been uh, all Geelong. They lead by nine points. Absolutely wonderful condition. Richardson comes over the top. Robert White towards the line. And again it goes over. 50 metres out from the Geelong goal. That's Morgan and White. Robin White. Mossop takes it. The hand pass to Morgan. Smothered off the boot. It's picked up by Alan Johnson. Johnson's kick over the shoulder. Bounces just inside the boundary line. Then over it goes. So a throwing to take place. Midway between centre wing and half forward flank for Geelong. Outer side of the ground. 13 points to four. Seven and a half minutes into the first term here at the MCG. As Mossop gets the tap. Morgan takes it. He's held after he got rid of the ball. And Darren Morgan will take the free kick. So Morgan to put Geelong into attack. He'll look for Ablett. Payne will be with him. Don't worry about that. Ablett is there. Richards is at the back. And uh, I thought he could have run round it. I mean, that makes it no contest. Bob Skilton agrees because he's just broken a pick. I think it shows a lack of confidence by the player, Sandy. Oh, yes. uh, well, no, you can't be critical of him because of that. It's just that he hasn't got the confidence to go ahead and do what he should have done. Flowers kick over the head of Healy. With him is Neil. Two uh, pacey players. Neil playing in front was the victor on this occasion. Over Burke. It goes to Couch. Back to Burke. Geelong slowly but still gets his kick. Down towards Mossop in the forward line. He needs support. No, he's going to do it on his own, is he? No, he's put his, got rid of it too slowly. Put his teammate under all sorts of pressure. Now a chance for Views. Rode the bumps but lost the football. He's still going. Richards taps it clear. Picked up hurriedly for the catch by Yates. Down towards the forward line. And the mark is taken by Fitzy. Six kicks to John Fitzgerald. I don't think they realise he's out there, Sandy. Kick for goal. He's threaded it straight through the middle, and the Cats looking good. They move to 3 2, leading the Demons four points. And he's not a real youngster, Sandy. Uh, 24 years of age, so uh, coming into the game at, at this stage is not what you'd call a real youngster. Still be nice to be 24 again, isn't that? Be delightful. <laughs> Half my age. Do you remember it? <laughs> no. Centre bounce again. Burke pointing towards the circle. Saying, I think he's in my way. Burke gets a tap. 
Tapped on again by Fitzgerald. Pack forming, though, the umpire let it go and then it formed again. And so a bounce will take place. This time about 25 metres closer to the Geelong goal. Well, Melbourne had all of the players, you said earlier, Sandy, and since then, Geelong have taken over. They've added three goals, one, while Melbourne have put on one point. Another pack forms. And Melbourne have tried a few changes on their forward line, but uh, nothing in position, I think just players moving around a bit. Healy, the hand pass to Regolo. Lovely kick from Regolo. Can fly and take it. Yes, he does. So 50 metres out from goal. Gary Lyon. The mark is 45 metres out, so he'll be kicking from 50 metres. Should have the shot from here. Plenty of open space. The angle of the goal's quite open from this side of the ground. And Gary Lyon. 45 metres out, it's a nice looking kick, right through the centre, good goal, first goal to Melbourne, Gary Lyon. So they break that run of behind, the Demons are 1 for 10, trailing by 10 points, the Cats are 3 2 20. The Geelong, Ablett, Hocking and Fitzgerald, the gold and this man, Gary Lyon, the first for the Demons. Very promising player, Sandy, Gary Lyon. Yes, certainly is. Here's the bounce again. A chance for Couch to send the Cats into attack. Gathers more height than length, that kick. Alan Jarrett gets underneath it. Couldn't take it. A chance for Robin White. He'll head towards the boundary line. Perhaps a little unwise. <laughs> Lenahan to half forward. Christensen. A little too slow, although the tackle was like breeze lightning. Flower gets the handball out. And again, the Demons are out of stride. But if the kick is right on the line. No, out of bounds on the full. So Shane Zantuck erring on that occasion. Right. Gaining nothing by giving it to Christensen. To half forward. Who's the runner? Hocking straight through past Santuck. Gets the handball away. Here's a chance for Fitzy again. Oh, how good lead footy, says John Fitzgerald, as he puts through a second and the catch ball. 4 2, 26, leading Melbourne, 1 4 10. Well, he's had a great quarter of football so far, Sandy. <laughs> An unbelievable quarter. Oh, as I said earlier, I wonder whether Melbourne know he's out there. Uh, maybe they do realise he's out there now because they're going to take Zantuck off and bring Lovett on. Seven kicks. Well, you know, when Zantuck copped that knock, why didn't they take him straight off the ground, Sandy? Yeah, yeah. The man's probably been in naughty land since then. Set of outs again. And I'm not being critical of Zantuck there. I'm saying that he was groggy. He should have been taken off. Morgan to Hocking to the half-forward line. Both sides tackling well. See a bounce 40 metres out from the Geelong scoring zone. There's Shane Zantuck just having a spell on the bench. But as Bob said, the horse has already bolted. Johnson had a great start last week. But I think it's going to be free kick here. So if my memory serves me correctly, their first three. That's a shocking kick. Danny Hughes says, fair dinkum. So a throw in, still slightly in Geelong's attacking zone. Mossop trying to get clear. Willow Wilson recovering after that heavy knock. Just hands it over. Here's the bounce again all day. Out positioned on that occasion. Conley. Oh, I've lost it. Where is it? I've got it back. Over the centre. Burke. Uh, lumbering between centre and uh, half back. Once again, it's repelled by Alan Jarrett. Burke, I think he, he gets a free kick, will he? He's at half back. And that's where he'll put Geelong into attack. So, the big fellow, 
Damien Burke in towards the centre. Almost a mark to Batterson, but couldn't take it. Flower picks it up. Gives the hand pass to Lovett. The long hand pass finds Wilson. On to Connolly. Connolly puts the pass forward right onto the chest of Cordner. And so Cordner from 40 metres out. Fairly acute angle. You can see it for yourself. But as I said before, from this side of the ground, the goal's a little bit more open. And Craig Cleave marking it. Let's see where he's got to man the mark that is and it's Cordner across the face of goal and through for one point so that's David Cordner's second point and two points out of Melbourne's one goal five and it's 11 to 26 in favour of Geelong into time on Bob by almost a minute Terry Bright will bring the ball back into play to the 50 metre line Gates buffing it out of it. Hughes got the hand pass, but it's taken by Lennon. Straight to Flower. Will be on uh, the left foot, and he hooks it. And Hughes should get the cats out of trouble. Look at the acceleration. Patterson chases, but he can't catch him. Reynolds, Richards, Jarrett. And it's Jarrett who puts it out in front of Alder. Says, go for a run, David. And he does. Now to half forward and a beautiful lovely pass, pass. Andy. finding Francesco. He didn't Rigolo. learn that from Crackers, Keenan, that's for no, sure. No, I don't. Crackers must have had a night off training. So right on the 50 metre line. We'll be into you tomorrow. Look at the left foot part off target, I fear. At another point. Well, they've had one more shot at goal and yet they trail by 14 points. Opportunities have been there. What a magnificent day for football. Ground in excellent condition. Please puts the ball back. Punched away. Johnson couldn't take it. Kicked off the Turner. Wilson. Burke. Burke couldn't take it. He leaves it for Fuse. Fuse the hand pass to White. White's hand pass smothered. It's very close to the boundary line. Over it goes as Lyon and White both coming through. Two youngsters of EFL football, and so it's a throwing to take place 55 metres away from the Melbourne goal. From the throwing. Over the back it comes. Hughes, kick smothered. Burke was pushed in the back. No free kick. A bounce will take place. Half four, slants for Melbourne. 27, almost 28 minutes into the quarter. With Geelong 26 points, Melbourne 12. From the bounce. Hughes against Burke. Burke wins a tap. Healy caught one too high. An accident or not, that's a free kick. Greg Healy is not going to take it. It was an accident, Sandy, but it's still a free kick. You can't hit the men on the head. That's what the rule says. On the bounce. Burke got the tap. Could have got a free kick. Healy's hand pass towards Bright. Thrown out by Bright. Picked up by Hughes. Hughes goes goalward. It swings back, and the former fullback from Port Adelaide has kicked the goal. Could have kicked one last week. I don't know why you're so surprised, Bob. Just because he's from South Australia originally. Danny Hughes has learned a heck of a lot since coming across. <laughs> In fact, he won Melbourne's best and fairest last Correct. year, Sandy. A very unusual South Australian, Danny Hughes. is a real <laughs> goer. Oh, Centre bounce. Again. No clear tap. Burke got the wide stretch, picks it up. Stretches kick straight to the opposition. It was missed by Bright. Lenahan coming through. Lynn support to Bright. Lenahan puts the ball wide as a siren sounds. And it's quarter time. Melbourne on two goals, six, 18 points. Geelong, four goals, two, 26. Into the second term here at uh, the MCG. Eight points the difference, favouring uh, Geelong. Jarrett overruns it, loses it. Hocking tries to get the hand pass clear. Boss had a quiet term, Fitzgerald didn't. Gets it across to Couch. Couch going up towards the half forward line. Ablett and Payne should be a free kick to Ablett. And it will be. So Gary Ablett. 45 metres out. 
Well, you make the distance, Danny. They kick their first. And this would be a great start for them because uh, the Demons came back in the closing stages of the first term. And he has put through one by. I think that's one of the reasons Gary Ablett often kicks a lot of points, Sandy, because he, he Off does, target. Well, he does have shots. <laughs> Very smart. He does continually order oh, that for kicking. Oh. What do you say? What do you say? Well, he kicks from a long way out so often because he's well, such that a was long... 45 metres. Well, he keeps missing them. Couch puts the ball back in. Mossop takes it. The hand pass smothered that time by Richards. Richards comes back. The ball's forced over the line by Richards and Views, and the throwing to take place. Well, what are you going to say, Danny? I'm not saying a word. I'm just in you, Robert. In other words, he's not a good kick, is he? From a distance. Or when he's under a bit of pressure. Actually, I think it should be, be better off going back to the old flat punt. Yeah. Well, it's a throw-in in the left forward pocket. Not a good kick, that drop punt. <laughs> he's got McKenna standing behind him at the moment, which is why he's saying that, of course. Former Collingwood and Army Reserve champion. Towards uh, centre where he'll go back, and Willow Wilson will take it. In saying that about the drop punt, if you can kick it like Peter McKenna or Austin Robertson or, for that matter, Roy's Hart, then by all means kick it. But when you miss as often as those guys do, why not change to something else? To centre wing, and the mark taken once again by Rigolo. He goes long. That's a lovely looking drop punt. Danny Hughes up from the side, affects the spoil. Robin White through the arms initially, but he recovers nicely. Gets the handball clear to Johnson. Johnson scoops it over his shoulder, and the Demons have an excellent chance now of posting their third goal as Chris Connolly, kid originally from Shepparton, I believe, who's come down and making a mark in BFL football. You can see him on the 50 metre line. It's a little deceiving though, because he can run in some 15 metres if he wants to. He certainly won't use all that. He's in a good deal of it, and he's missed it. Never looked like it. Just pushed it across the face of goal. That's that drop punt again, Zanny. Yeah. So Chris Connolly missing one. And two goals, seven Melbourne. A scratch and Neal comes in, puts the ball forward. Damian Burke with a long hand pass. Lenahan missed it completely. Regalo intercepts and he's tripped. Well, he's no free kick. He's got to be kidding. Flower comes out with the ball, hooks it over the shoulder, and in the way is young Peter White. How Regalo did not get a free kick there. White gives it on to 200 Gamer. Robert scratch a Neal. The long kick from Neal. Over the head of Bright. It's Flower and Bright. Flower taps it back. They both split, slip over. Jarrett picks it up. Hand pass to Cross. Connolly tried to kick it off the ground. Regolo comes into Lynn support. Boss gives a hand pass to Christensen. And Geelong go forward. It's Christensen's kick towards half forward. Ablett and Payne both going after it. But the ball was well over the line before they could even get near it. So a half forward flank for Geelong. A throw in to take place. 19 plays 27 favouring the Cats. The battle for 10th spot on the ladder at stake as Boss gets it out to Morgan across to Bright. Now he can go short here to Hocking and he takes it. 40 metres out, directly in front, in absolutely ideal conditions. Let's kick one. Does it give them just a little bit of breathing space? Margin at the moment is eight points. And the margin is now nine. Four kick that. Directly in front. This crowd starting to build up slowly. I would imagine by possibly four or five o'clock. It's going to be a beauty because North and Footscray competing in this unique double header this evening. Danny Hughes, can he keep it in play? No. The league have been blessed with the day for a double hitter, Danny. Oh, haven't they? Haven't they? 
marvellous conditions and uh, hopefully it will continue tomorrow when uh, there's a fine smother by Brian Wilson. Is that good, Sandy? Maybe there was a beach instead. <laughs> <laughs> well, they should get a crackerjack crowd here tomorrow for the Carlton Collingwood clash. By golly, you're right, Sandy. Throw in again. Back. Wilson starting to come into it. Tumbles a punt. Bright defends stoutly. Does it well. Hawking's the target. No, he talked out of it by uh, McLennan. Now he goes short. Ablett has created the space. Got away from Payne on that occasion. And took a lovely. Beautiful play, Sandy. Both by Bright in defence. He found the player in the centre. And Ablett really made position beautifully. In the manner that Peter McKenna used to do. And Ablett with the drop punt. Offline. <laughs> As you said. One point the result. They're bad. This is aren't they? Gee, the, the very, very disappointing. The kicking for goal by both sides. Sandy, Ted Whitten works for 3GL. Why they do not get Ted Whitten to teach Ablett how to kick that punt kick. Ablett now takes the hand pass from Burke. Probably kicked this. Another drop punt. Another point. What's that he's booted now? 1-3. It's unbelievable. Richards plays on from full back. An awkward looking bounce. Uh, Reminiscent of Ray Gavlik out there. Now Richards has two, three. Hand pass, a beautiful hand pass. And it's a great piece of play as it turns out. Mistake turns into an excellent piece of football as Healy gives it out to Lyon. And so, well, the gamble taken by Richards really came off and Lyon the chance of kicking his second goal. Gary Lyon. 55 metres out. Doesn't quite make the distance. At the back, Lenahan couldn't take it. Touch and through for one point. So the margin is now 10 points. Favouring the Cats. Terry Bright. He's uh, looking at Burke and then decides to go the other side. Finding Mike Schultz. Schultz is in the back pocket. Couch will be his target. Giving away inches, so he tried to use the body. Support from Scratch O'Neill. Hurriedly onto the right foot. Close to the boundary line, and it will bounce. No, it'll be kept in play. Some fierce tackling. The tackling by both sides has been good today. Healy scoops it up and spoons it towards the line, picks it up and gives it to Jarrett. Jarrett hooks it over his shoulder into the vacant space. Past all day it goes. Some pretty sloppy football going on at the moment too. All day does well to get it on to Danny Hughes. He's got the runner and stretch who goes in towards half forward. Away from Cordner, it's fisted. Waiting down is Batterston. Did he cop one? Doesn't matter. He got the ball out with a nice hand pass. Sock it off the ground. It was an accident and it allows Burke to come in and kick it back in towards the middle. Now Flower can go to the half forward line. He's got two players there. Whitehall line uses the ladder in towards uh, Cordner. In the right forward pocket, he takes them. I know it's a fair while back, Sandy, but if Melbourne do kick a goal here, Mossakoff and drum on. The real credit must go to young Payne, who, you know, took the gamble, left Ablett and repulsed the attack on the half-back line some time ago. But if Melbourne do score a goal, credit to Payne for it. Let's see what Gordner does. Well, he won't, Bob, and after that enormous spiel. With the drop punch he used. And one point only for a goal. Or was it out of bounds? It was out of bounds. A ball. It's even worse. The other one is Gore. Alan Johnson puts a lovely kick forward. A lion! A glorious mark! What a beautiful mark to Gary Lyon. 45 metres out, directly in front. Kick one to Gary Lyon. Directly in front. Goes goal. It's a lovely looking kick. Glorious mark, great goal, excellent play, Gary Lyon. His second, and well done, Gary Lyon. The Demon fans happy.
They're now within four points of the Cats. There's a young man with a great future in AFL football. Set a bounce again. It's a better bounce. The last one was an absolute shocker. This time we'll see same thing happen again. Still virtually in the middle. Burke and Alday. Burke wins it. They're not taking it away. This is uh, Brett Lovett to uh, half forward. White chances his arm. He's still going. Gets flattened. Uh, they have possession. He's paid the advantage. And Christensen sends Geelong into attack once again. Ablett! What lovely judgment. He was behind Payne. <laughs> That's a top mark, Bob, isn't it? Yeah, it was, Andy. Gary Ablett, one goal, three to his credit so far. Drop punt. One goal, four to his credit. Russell Richards will bring the ball back into play. That's Gary Ablett with the big number five on the back. And Richards puts the kick forward, finds Yates. Uh, Yates of Geelong, a hand pass to Hocking. Hocking goes short and wide, and Andrew Buse takes the mark right on the 50 metre line. And Buse hasn't goal to date, won't even try as he goes short, just over the head of Morgan. Wilson, straight to the opposition, drums hand pass out to Yates. Yates goes short, oh. Couch couldn't take it, picks it up, swings back onto the left foot, gets past the trouble. Oh, puts a real high one in the air. Nobody can take the mark. It comes to Healy of Melbourne. Healy puts it out towards centre wing and finds Regolo. Regolo plays on immediately. Has an awkward looking bounce. Lovely pass though, and Hughes takes the mark. Cordner, I should say, across to Connolly. Connolly swings it down towards the pocket. Lyon! And Lyon takes the mark. Now, what was on Lyon? I think you'd find that Terry Bright has been shifted onto Lyon, but it matters not. The Lyon is dominant at the moment. He's got two goals to his credit, possibly three after this kick. So Gary Lyon. No. With another drop punt, another point. You're into the drop punt today, Robert. Well, you look at the scoreboard, Sandy. I am. 3-9 plays 4-7, 16 behinds we've seen scored. And there have been a couple, incidentally, out of bounds on the ball. It's been a woeful On the strength of the kicking here today, I would think it would pay both sides to get either Ted Whitten or Peter Hudson and tell them to forget the drop punt. This is the way you kick a football. Christensen to the half-forward line. An opportunity now for Mark Yates in towards Ablett. And now he's on such a rotten angle here, he'll probably kick this. Why not just let one go, Gary? Well, he uses a drop punt and drifts it across the face of goal for yet another behind. Now, what is that? 1-5? Well, Melbourne fans would be uh, thanking their lucky stars. Geelong fans would be hanging their heads and wondering what on earth is going on. Christensen is at the back again. He'll be first to it, but he's under pressure from Flower. Could almost be free kick. Well, they'll get out of it through handball. It finishes up with Lenahan short over the head of Fitzgerald. He's been quiet. Beautifully taken by Ablett. He'll get the hard one. He'll kick that one, and he has. Didn't he trap it beautifully, though, Sandy? Fantastic I play. Oh, that's when you see, look, no criticism of young pain whatsoever. You can't take it away from
In amongst the Geelong trainers, it was Batterson and Healy. And, uh, there's Hocking on camera. They ran into them, Sandy. Oh, I, thought, I thought their contract might be expiring. Lenahan is off now, and on the ground for the first time, Robert Scott. Only a youngster, 17 years of age, as Hocking takes the kick. It was Lenahan limping around the boundary. Hocking puts the ball forward. Off the hands of the pack, Wilson takes it. His hand pass out to Jarrett. Jarrett ignored Richards, who was on his own, and straight to the opposition it goes. He's done a good job, Burke, hasn't he, Bob? He's played an excellent game, Sandy. Two of them here. Fitzgerald takes it. Plays on. An excellent first quarter by oh. Fitzgerald. But he can make a mistake, lose it. Gives it out now. And young Scott takes it. A hand pass to Buse. Buse from centre half forward. Hooks it back. Not far enough, though. And a one point goes on the board. It's just that last player running at him. In this quarter, Sandy, Geelong have added a six goals, eight. Shoot. To two goals, four. Kick back into play. The Demons are in real strife. Love it. Bright. Wilson. Views towards the line. And over. Out of sight of the ground. Very close to siren time. And the Cats could be well pleased with this term. There it is. It's half time. As Bob said, a six-goal burst. The Geelong sees them on 10-10-70. Leading Melbourne, 4-10-34 on sevens. Big lead. The question is, can the Demons come back? The Cats kicked four goals in the last seven minutes of the second term and looked brilliant. Hocking tries to get it clear, can't do so, so Connolly sends uh, Melbourne into attack. Over the head of Cordner it goes. Here's Scratch and Neil out to Christensen. He began like there was no tomorrow. That's a disappointing kick. Zantuck comes over the top to affect the spoil. Flower across to Gandini. Uh, not Gandini, it is Lovett and immediately out of bounds on the full. Well, they're wearing the same jumper, aren't they? No, Gandini's yeah, 43. Red and blue, yeah. 43. Forgot to carry the seven. Here's Boss. Jarrett. But fisted away by Hughes. Couch goes with a roundhouse left straight to Willow. Who says thank you and gives it to Alan Johnson. Now if they score first here, they got Lyon at the back. But there's a good mark in defence taken by Craig Clee. Not out of it, but by gee, they've got some work to do. Trailing by six goals. Burke will be the flyer and he cleverly taps it over the back to Buse. He takes a couple of metres to get going but once he does he really goes across the couch. Oh why they don't kick it. Stretch intercepts, almost gives away the free kick to Bright. It doesn't matter, he's got possession and away they go. In towards Drum. 55 metres out. Mossop's in the square. Plays on. Long towards goal and hits the post. So Yates scores his first behind. And the wobbling post tells the story. What's it tell, Sandy? Carry on, Bob. Views punches it away. Morgan, Geelong running right at the moment as Yates gets the short kick forward. In general play, Geelong are almost doing as they like. Melbourne, a lack of confidence as Zantuck puts it straight across the ground towards the boundary line and over it goes. For a throw in. Not playing with confidence, Sandy. No, they're in strife. They trail by 37 points. I think Geelong have done their homework because uh, Bruns, after Alan Johnson apparently took Collingwood apart last week as a rover, Bruns has tagged Johnson this week and a very quiet player in Ooh. Johnson as Melbourne now. Payne gives it across to Stretch. Stretch and well placed kick finds Flower. Flower's got plenty of room. One bounce and it slides away from him. Now the left foot kick. It's not a good one. Straight to the opposition. Schultz. Wobbly old kick finds Hocking. Hocking's got plenty of time. He'll hand pass the ball on to Morgan. Morgan will have a bounce. A kick for Morgan, as Sandy called it, is wrong. It's a one point. <laughs>
did look as though it was going to be a goal, though, Sandy. Thank you, Robert. Yes. They're doing all the attacking in these opening minutes of this all-important third term. Turner to Healy. They're going about as indirectly as they possibly can. And uh, Christensen takes that one. Done a good job, Christensen. He has. He started well, didn't he? And uh, had a bit of a quiet patch in the second term. Even though Robbie Flowers picked up his kicks, I think Christensen's been a better player. Yep. To half forward, Ablett got buffeted out of it, and Turner again takes the mark. And plays on straight away, out to Steve Stretch, one bounce across half back. Clear, he saw Terry Bright on his own, so he decided I'll have to see if I can find Cordner, and he finds him. He hooks it back in towards the pocket. Cleave is there, and he heads towards the boundary line with a mighty thump, and it goes over for another throw in. Well, it looks as though Gary Lyons lining up at full forward, Sandy, and I don't agree with that. I thought Lyon was doing a tremendous job out further and allowed to move around a little bit. And I, well, I, just my belief that you do not move winners, and to me, Lyon was a winner. And as Rogolo picks it up, snaps towards goal, it could be a ripper! Went with Golo, tackles caught, snapped over the shoulder, what a magnificent goal! Try that one on for goal of the day on World of Sport because a beauty from Francesco. Now, will that be the lift that Melbourne require to see if they can get back? Big crowd building for the first of the double header here at the MCG. Centre bounce again. One by the Demons. Another one here will certainly make it interesting. They go down towards the half forward line. The bouncing ball favours Bright. He gets a hurried kick out in front of Christensen. With him is Flower. Flower does it beautifully as he keeps it in play to Healy. Healy's under pressure, but he gets the handball across to Richards. He loves a run. Richards goes long up towards the half forward line. Over the back of Cleveland Lyon. Bright is there once again. Wilson storms through, but he's caught with the ball. Plays on. Gets a hurried kick. Gotta be close. Johnson suckers off the ground. And back comes Melbourne. Two goals in two minutes. Johnson kicks his first. And the demon flags are starting to fly. Oh, well, I think it's great for the game, Sandy, but I think I might have paid a free kick. Oh, against Willow. <laughs> I think so. Gee. Nevertheless, a goal is on the board. And they've cut this margin to just 26 points. Centre bounce. Who can get it out of the middle this time? Burke goes for an attempt at soccer off the ground. Taken by Jarrett with a long kick to half forward. And a good mark taken by Richards. They're running hot at the moment. Lost all confidence in the second term. A prodigious drop punt in towards full forward. Waiting down was Batterston. Tried to do a Diego Maradona, but was unsuccessful, and so another bounce. Batterson saying, what about my free kick? And Andrew, you were very lucky you weren't penalised there. Andrew Buse. From the bounce, right on the goal line. Tap down. Regalo again, but this time he snaps off line. And so Frank Regalo has two goals three to his credit. Two goals, three out of 6-11. At 6-11, 47 to 10, 12, 72. Terry Bright. It's a little uncertain which way to go. Alexi out of side of the ground. He's got the lead from Christensen. Too far. Richardson leads in the race for the... Uh, Richards, I should say. And Russell Richards. When he runs, he runs. A hand pass to Turner. Turner on towards oh. Wilson. Puts him under pressure. Hughes off the ground. Regalo again. A lovely looking step. Regalo swings back. Three goals. Frank Regalo. That's a ripper. He's, he's gone berserk. Regalo. Sensational performance. And back come Melbourne. That's Wilson there in the hands of the trainers. What's that, Sandy? Well, delirious Melbourne fans. To see the Demons kick these three goals. Can they keep it up? 7-11 plays 10-12. They trail by six goals at half time. 
Burke wins it. He's won them, but they haven't been able to take it away. Drum can't either as Jarrett spoons it forward to Connolly. Connolly's got Johnson running. He's starting to come into the game after being well held. Up towards half forward. Bright tries to mark it. This left Batterston in. Don't tell me he's going to goal. Oh, he has. He has goal. Let's come storming home, say Demon fans. Four goals in eight and a half minutes. And Batterston has kicked his first. A great move. Turn him into the ruck, Sandy. Burke was absolutely dominating the ruck in the first half of the game. And turn him in there. Not quite the same as far as Burke's concerned this time. Spews. Hand pass. Wilson. Tackled. Loses it. Umpire gives a free kick to Wilson. I wouldn't have, but the umpire does. That's so Brian Wilson. Stretch giving the lead. Taking advantage of Ab Ablett's laziness. And so Stretch puts the ball in and it goes to Cordner. Cordner puts it long. Greg Healy up, hocking at the back. A hand pass comes out to Buse. On now to Boss. Boss gets past Richards. A high floating kick. Can Flower get Whoa. there? He does, but he missed the mark. Bright comes out with it. Terry Bright across to Bruns. Bruns drives it towards half forward. Stretch gets an awkward bounce. It favours Ablett. Ablett from the centre of the ground. A high floating kick to once again. An awkward one for anyone to mark. Nobody does. It's picked up by Scott. Scott towards goal. At one point, only the result kicked by Robert Scott. And the youngster, I'm not sure whether that's his first score. He may have got some last week, Kevin. And so, Paul Payne to bring the ball back into play for the Demons. Wilson up, couldn't take it. Buse at the back. A hand pass from Buse across to Terry Bright. Bright floats the ball forward. Mossop with the height, can't take the mark. Payne takes it, he's tackled, loses it. It comes to Mossop again. Mossop snap, it's a goal! Steady out for Geelong. Is it enough? The margin is once again 20 points. 11 13 plays 8 11 on Sevens Big League. Very happy Geelong supporters. And that was a real steadier for Geelong. They really needed that one because Melbourne had lifted to such an extent. Four goals won in eight and a half minutes. And Geelong, well, struggling to get the ball forward. I think that was the first one. They looked like scoring apart from that point they kicked early in the piece. Yep, You're right, Robert. They're not out of the woods Three yet. Three points anyway. 20 points is the margin. Turner comes charging in, but can't beat Burke. Christensen, four. Probably will take it out of the middle. Now, new spring in their step, Melbourne. And Geelong are finding themselves under pressure. Schultz. The bounce. Oh, ends up favouring Regolo. Wilson. Under pressure. Goes to the ground. Boss picks it up. And the catch should get out of it. As Couch gives it across to Bright. Another one to Drum. He's got plenty of room. He goes short and finds his teammate there in Yates. Well, he's got Mossop calling for it. That's where it's headed now. He's in front. No opposition at all. And with the Melbourne backman can't, cannot walk. Young Payne cannot walk. Cannot either. What's he doing then? Straight off the ground, surely. Mossop. Well, Melbourne have realised on the bench. Gandini getting ready to come on. Bad luck for Payne. But the action is with Mossop. Kicked a goal minutes ago. And that looks pretty good too. Has kicked another one. And the catch does it. Well, Melbourne came charging for a moment. But John Mossop has halted that charge. Well, I do not know what happened to young Payne, but he really is in trouble. And uh, John Mossop walks back to full forward. 
Mud on camera. Payne coming off the ground. Russell Richards going down to pull back once again. And as the centre bounce is going on, Payne will come off. Gandini on. Turner wins the tap. Connolly again drives Melbourne forward. Boss couldn't take the mark. Lyon takes the ball. A goal to Melbourne as Lyon kicks his third. And Melbourne coming back again. And Connolly getting the ball out of the centre after Turner. And if I, we go back to the last double header, Sandy, we were very impressed with Turner against the Swans as a ruck in the first half and then they took him off the ball. Yes, 9-11 plays 12-13 now. So they're hanging in there, but they've been unable at the moment to bridge this 20 point margin. Can they do it? Socket off the ground by Johnson, cleverly. Oh, there's a gutsy effort to mark and should have almost been a kick to Michael Schultz. It hasn't come off. Bright. He doesn't take it. They all sit there watching it momentarily. Scratcher kneels under pressure. Gets it away, however. And Geelong out of trouble. Flower does the fisting work, but he goes the wrong way. It may come off because Johnson's there to spoon it forward to Jarrett. Beautifully tackled. Loses the football. Turner now. Almost held it too long. White got leg. No free kick. Oh, it's a rabble. It's a rabble. And the crowd letting him know. I suppose the question must be asked is, do you just let a passenger play like that go on, Bob? I think they must have seen it. Decided they would. Is the bounce again, Burke. Wide, Neil. Scratcher gets his kick at talk. But uh, Damien Drum a little too far underneath the football. Oh, there's nothing in that. Area. He's going to lose it, Sandy. Well, it's that stupid play by Hughes. I mean, really. Yes, I know he's South Australian. And that... I, I know... Said he did cop one, and you can understand him being a bit upset, but then where does it gain him? It's gained him absolutely nothing. In fact, probably cost a goal as Couch goes forward and brings up his first. So bad play there by Melbourne, and a costly error. He did cop one. In fact, I wouldn't have been a bit surprised, Sandy, if Hughes had just got up. I wouldn't be surprised if the umpire had pulled the pencil out. He's not Glenn James. He's not Coach. that quick. Oh, you lose one, you gain one. <laughs> A little bit of philosophy there from Bob Skilton, ladies and gentlemen. Set of outs again. 65 plays, 91. Again, the margin opened up. It's a shocking bounce in the middle, really. The standard has uh, not been good today. An opportunity, instead of taking his kick, was Robert Scott. Tried to handball through the pack. And so another bounce. It's a better one. Burke, a mighty thump. Pushed wide. Couch does well. Tapped over the back. Is there anyone there? Yes. Andrew Buse twists out of it beautifully. Goes onto the left foot. Down towards Mossop, gets front spot and takes the mark. Oh, gee, he's uh, certainly come into prominence in the past 15 minutes. And with Mossop's confidence obviously up, it's asking a lot of Russell Richards. He must be giving away, I don't know the measurement in centimetres, Sandy. We'll do it in inches, A Bob. foot. And I know Melbourne do lack height, so who to put there is probably the problem. There's not another player on the back line at the moment as Mossops kicks astray and then one point goes on the board. But there's not another player at, with the exception of Danny Hughes. And, uh, you know, Hughes is doing okay at centre-half back, so he wouldn't, you know, although he, he's kicking out now. Yates is down there with him at the moment, so it's hard to say what Melbourne could do as Stretch takes a lovely mark. Stephen Stretch. Harry Ablett standing on his foot. <laughs> Just preventing him from playing on. So Stretch puts the ball forward. And in this quarter, Stretch has done a great job against Gary Ablett. Oh. Gandini caught one too high. A free kick to Gandini for mine. 
not the case. Not to umpire Gavin Dorr. Burke, take it, Robert. View's got the hand pass. Terry Bright loses possession. Turner was there with him. And Bright goes after Turner. I don't know why, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, well. Friendly. Warm up a little. Friendly little, friendly little tap. Ankle tap. From the bounce. Pushed out by Gandini. Patterson hooks it back. And uh, went over the line. Three kick downfield. So it'll be taken by Healy. Lyon gives him a lead. Wilson's running into him. Ooh. Wilson, 30 metres out. Directly in front. A chance for his first. Well, they want a couple because Mossop was, uh, again, given the cat some breathing space, space with that goal from Paul Couch. They've been able to open up a 27-point lead. Wilson a chance to make it 21 points. Oh, dear. Shocking kick. So another point. Points like that, 30 metres out, directly in front. Very, very costly. Burke setting himself. Didn't take the mark. Gandini waiting down. A nice handball to Healy. He'll go over the top. Does so now to Wilson. Back to Connolly. And that's a better kick. That's a goal. So the Demon's not lying down yet. Chris Connolly kicks his first. And the Demon's 10. 10 12 plays 13 14. It's lovely teamwork by Melvin there. Gandini and getting the hand pass across. And then Greg Healy over the top to Connolly. So excellent teamwork, a lovely goal. Both centre have done well today. Chris Connolly for Melbourne, Paul Couch for Geelong. Centre bounce. Turner up against Burke. It's a bounce that favours Burke. Tapped over the back by Buse. Cleverly done. He was looking for Couch. Christensen tries to stop the running football. Zantuck is there as well. And another bounce will take place. Still in the square. Slightly into Geelong's attacking zone. They lead. Sorry, Danny. It's all right, Robert. Oh, look at that for a thump. Hughes will be first to it. Gathers it with ease. Zantuck under pressure and a shot again. Yates to half forward. Morgan held. Not free kick. Hughes a hurried kick towards centre wing where it will be kept in play only momentarily. By Brent Lovett. Uh, boundary umpire signal out of bounds. He did. Well, they really are confusing the issue. He actually signaled. Yes, I don't. Well, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know that they know what they're doing. Zantuck ripped off it. Out the back, white. Back to Zantuck. And it'll be a free kick to Robert White. Out of the shadows, into the sunlight, to Stephen Stretch. A lovely kick from Stretch. Gee, that's got some distance in it. Nice mark to uh, Schultz, though, Sandy. Yeah, very good mark. I like the Schultz. look of Schultz. To Boss. Centre wing, Bruns. Stretch after him. Takes him out of it, but Brunsy will bottle it up there. Good play by Bruns. Yeah, he was surrounded and did well. Uh, showed a lot of courage. Bounce will take place midway between half forward and centre of the ground on the Geelong side of the centre. Turner gets a tap. It's taken by Wilson. The hand pass out to Batterston. Melbourne streaming forward. Batterston to centre half forward. Lyon! So Gary Lyon. He's 45 metres out from goal on the mark, so he'll kick from about the 50 metre line. He can kick a ball. He's got three so far. Let's make it four. Great goal to Melbourne. Nice play to Gary Lyon.
Sophie and Batterson and Brian Wilson. And so a good goal to Melbourne. Six goals for the Demons in this term. But it's still not enough to catch the Geelong Cats. The margin is 14 points. And we're into the 24th minute of this all-important third term. Centre bounce. Neil dumps it forward. Past Jarrett it goes. Johnson gets to ground. Trip, said the umpire. Been pretty well held. Hocking over the top. Can't take it. Here's an opportunity for Lovett. Inside the 50 metre line, he goes short. And yes! Back come the Demons again through line. Well, I've got to retract one statement, Sandy. I Which just, one? I disagree with him going to full forward, but he looks like kicking three for the quarter if he kicks truly this time. And so John Northey, a better foresight than RJ Skilton. Is a chance to make the margin just eight points. Gee, it's been a fine comeback. Oh, and he's done it. He has done it. Eight points the margin, favouring Geelong. As Lyon kicks his fifth goal, third for the quarter. 13-14, plays 12-12. A well-placed kick, that one too, Sandy. Beautifully positioned. And Melbourne will answer that second quarter of six goals, eight to two goals, four. And in this quarter, Melbourne have added, in fact, eight goals, two, Sandy. From the centre bounce, they go forward again. Down towards Lyon. Here he comes. He's got possession. He's in the into the ground. A chance now to make it two points. And Gary Lyon. And nine goals for the quarter. An opportunity to kick his six. And I worked it out quicker that time. <laughs> yes. Eight plus one's not often that tough, is it, Bob? So, so Lyon. Four from 12 is. <laughs> Directly in front, 30 metres out. The drop punts on its way. He has goal. Two points to margin. And Demon fans ecstatic. Geelong fans stunned. 13-14 Geelong, Melbourne at 13-12. Now this crowd's starting to build up now with the second game. The North Melbourne puts greater commence at 5 o'clock, Sandy. And I think they're going to be entertained to a pretty good quarter and a half of well, quarter and a bit of football now. Set about. How can the Cats stop this run? Burke wins a thump out of the middle. White gets the handball across to Hughes. He goes to the half forward line corner. Cordner looking up towards Wilson, who's loose. Oh, he can't take it, but he'll get the free kick. kick. He'll get it. And Turner carrying on again. Possum line. They're not too impressed with Mr. Turner. I think they remember a practice game. Yes, yes. Yes, slowly but surely the memories are flooding back. But this kick could give the Demons the lead. Well, I don't think, Turner's, I don't think Turner's too worried about things, Sandy. No, he can be at the moment. Now, 40 metres out, directly in front. Brian Wilson, who came into this game because Williams was out, has a chance of putting the Demons in front, but he's hooked that. And that drop punt. Goes through from behind. So it's a point the difference. Geelong coming back into play. That's a good mark for Yates. Not paid by the umpire, though. Healy tackled. Coming through was Turner, who forced it forward to Healy. Kick smothered by Christensen. Players running riot at the moment as they're all throwing themselves in with reckless abandon. A free kick should be paid there to Hughes. Call 
play on by the umpire as the hand pass comes out. Connolly picks up that loose play by Bright. Backs forward. That's, that's boot and mouse, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. That's a mark. The foul. No. Going the other way. You're a classic, Robert. <laughs> You're a classic. <laughs> Caught up in the excitement, and there's plenty of it. Oh, Christensen goes into the centre of the ground, and Hocking takes the mark. Well, you'd think it was the last quarter, but we've still got another one to go yet. But tremendous excitement. Wilson bottles it up, taken out eventually by Jarrett, across to Healy. His hand pass is intercepted. They might finish up with it again through Healy. Batterston now, solidly met, and he'll take the free kick. Going to be some sore and sorry boys at the end of this game. Batterston. Lyon comes a long way out. Burke is at the back. Shepherding sees him clear. Ablett comes down for a kick, and I think that's the first one for a long, long time. It's plenty of distance in a drop punt. Goes to half forward, but no one at home, and a good mark taken again by Turner. Now he's got loose players absolutely everywhere. They can create the loose man here. Away they go. Gandini across to Lovett. Shocking kick. Batterston puts him under pressure. Oh, he threw it out almost. There's a good tackle. The umpire lets it go on. Batterston flattened as he gets his kick. Goes in towards the pocket. And the mark taken by Craig Cleve. Cleve puts it all across the ground. A bit dangerous. Views is there, though. Equal to the occasion. Gives it across to Marty Christensen. He's got the short player leading, and that's Couch. Couch takes the mark. Wants to swing back onto the left foot, but White had him covered. Good play by White. Now, Couch dummies beautifully and is able to play on. Couch puts the ball up towards the half-forward line. It's tapped down the ground. Fitzgerald's first on the scene. Has time to steady. Straighten up and go forward. Shepard goes through. It's hit the post. One point kicked by John Fitzgerald. 30 and a half minutes played, close to siren time. And the margin is just two points. Favouring Geelong is Gandini. Jarrett on centre wing to the running Hughes. Oh, it's a shock of a hand pass. The bounce just caught him unawares. Bruns the scratcher. Now do something in game number 200. He gives it across to Buse. He gets caught. The lumbering bird. It is a slow motion stuff. As he goes towards Ablett. Can't take it. And it goes out of bounds in the right forward pocket. And you, you know, one of the differences in this quarter has been the way that Stretch has played on Ablett. Throw it. Right forward pocket. Mossop tried to get it down to scratch a kneel, couldn't do so. Ablett goes in over the top. And the umpire has no alternative but to come in and bounce. Oh, gee, this is going to be a final quarter and a half. And that is the Geelong runner out in the ground. Sandy, he's so slow, that Mickey Raps. <laughs> <laughs> You're old, Vic. <laughs> Here's the bounce. Hughes can't take it away, neither can Healy. And another one. Very close. I don't know whether they've lost the... Uh, Bell, but John Devine's yeah. got to use trainers to sneak out because Mickey Raps is out, <laughs> out there all the time. We're in the 32nd, in the 33rd minute now of this term. Wilson tries to bottle it up, kept in by Buse, hook back, and the mark has been taken by Bright. Oh, he's on a nasty angle now. Will he play on? He's, no one's offering him anything. Can't play on, Zanny. There's the siren. No. Now, he might use the old check side here. He's trying to sneak around, but umpire side bottom having none of that. Well, he's going to have to use the check side. Getting Connolly out of the way. And Fitzgerald. Oh, it's a lovely kick. Check side. For a point. So, at three-quarter time, we find Geelong. 13-16. 94, leading Melbourne, 13-13, 91. At half 
time the margin was 36 points, but the Demons are back in town. It's now only three points favouring the Cats. They stopped to a walk in the third term. On the other hand, the Demons came roaring home. Flower now starts proceedings in the third uh, final term across to Healy, out wide to Connolly. To the half forward line. Corden is the target. Can't take the mark. First to it was White. A hurried kick for the Cats, straight back to Connolly, however. He goes onto that left foot. Schultz, and he's done a pretty good job, Bob. Yeah, I like the look of Schultz, and he's uh, nothing brilliant about him. He hasn't played an excellent game. Oh, Burke was nearly going there. And Burke has played an excellent game. Yes, he's done very, very well. He's rucked well, has picked up kicks around the ground. A well-placed kick into the centre. Turner taps it away. Boss a hand pass to Yates. Yates' oh. hand pass smothered. Boss's kick, it too smothered. Connolly comes in, coming through as Fitzgerald. His hand pass taken by Boss. A high floating kick towards half forward. Bruns was up, couldn't take the mark. Two Geelong players in Yates and Morgan almost collided, but Morgan took it and put it forward. And the, the fellow Mossop takes the mark. Well, as I said, Sandy, Richard's too short. And well, I think he was trying to punch it away, Sandy, but he just couldn't get near it. Yeah. Well, Mossop. I think Mossop's the danger man, and I, I would put his kick too. back there, Sandy. Let's see what Mossop does. This is an important kick to start the final quarter. He's goal, and the margin is nine points. He's ten centimetres shorter. Well, what's that in inches? Centimetres means nothing. Cordner going down to full back, Sandy. What is it in inches? I don't know. Yeah, look at it, I haven't got a clue. I haven't got me calculator. I think it's about three and a half inches. Oh, what? Well, I'll tell you what, they've cheated on their measurements. If he's not a foot shorter. Centre bounce again. Nine points the difference. A good start by Geelong and Burke gives them a mighty thump down to the half forward line. It's Hughes, however, who'll repel the attack. Goes on to the right foot with a flat looking punt kick. And the mark is taken there by uh, Richards. Well, he loves to keep play moving. Finds Healy with a hand pass. They want a goal here, although it's only very early. Lyons done the job in the third term. But they must keep going. White heads towards the boundary line. Dangerous, though, because Healy's there. Fires in towards full forward, going across the face of goal. And Terry Bright comes in and thumps it over the line for a rush behind. Three minutes played. Eight points the difference, favouring Geelong. Terry Bright can punch that ball through. Craig Cleave now puts it back into play. Richards gets the ball down. The long hand pass came from Lovett. Finds Wilson. Wilson straightens up and goes goalward. And Melbourne answering that one. And back to two points the difference. Wilson puts his first goal on the board. An excellent play by Brett Lovett. And set that one up for Brian Wilson. And Wilson there just clapping and saying, well done. So the margin is once again two points. Two points favouring the Cats. In a great final quarter as Turner this time wins it from the middle. Gandini can't take it away. Couch intercepted. They pile on that football. And the umpire will come in and have a bounce. Both umpires have tended to let play go on. Mick Raps is still out there running for the Cats. Hardly Carl Lewis, but he does the job and he loves it. His uh, views getting it out wide. An opportunity for Couch. Up to half forward. Bit of a nudge on Ablett. He was pushed underneath the football. Christensen read it badly. Healy looks for the free kick. Drum goes wider. Dangerous here. Bright. Play on to Christensen. Oh, he threw it out. Their uh, handball is bringing them unstuck. And Melbourne should get out of trouble, although Flower is caught and Ping holding the ball. Melbourne support is not too happy as Fitzgerald comes out with a kick. The lead from Ablett. Fitzgerald goes there looking for Ablett. Ablett taps the ball down. Still in there trying to tap it out. J Jarrett comes in. Buse comes in for Geelong. And so... As Andrew Buse gives the ball across to umpire side bottom. Greg Healy also getting up from the bottom of the pack. 
45 metres out from the Geelong goal, will have a bounce. Mossop got rid of Turner. Healy got the ball forward. Flower gets an awkward bounce. It's still in play, though. Christensen does well to get the hand pass out to Drum. On to Ablett it goes. Baba. Well smothered. Beautiful players, boss. Look for Burke. Burke gets oh. a favourable bounce. A beautiful hip and shoulder from Brian Wilson. And he really made it hard for Damien Burke. And a bounce will take place. He's up again, though. He's right. Well, his confidence would be high. He's played a ripper game, Damien Burke. Yeah, he's done a top job. Here's the bounce. Turner flicks it. Conley scouting the pack. And Andrew Hughes, I think, is unimpressed at that umpiring decision. Robin White will be the recipient of a free kick. No doubt it was right, though, Zeddy. Yep. The former South Adelaide wingman. Waiting out is Wilson. Danger here for Willow as he goes in towards the forward pocket region. Lyon picks it up nicely, gets rid of two, goes short. Oh, Lynn's on his own. Gandini. Could it be the great Gandini if he goals? Forty metres out, directly in front. A chance for the Demons to hit the front. The drop punt on its way. The Demons have hit the front. And Len Gandini. His first goal, Danny. And what a ripper it was to give his team the lead. And when I say first goal, I'm not just talking about today. You're talking about his VFL career. So the scoreboard shows Melbourne. 15-14, leading Geelong. 14-16. Centre bounce. Burke of Geelong. Turner of Melbourne. The bounce favours Turner. Thumps it high. Should have got a free kick as Burke kept coming. Kicked off the ground by White. And this time it's White of Melbourne who forces the ball forward. Love it there. The hand pass comes out to Gandini again. And the ex-Geelong player out to show Geelong. Over the back it comes. Flower. A goal coming up as Flower puts it through. And Melbourne ten points up. So the Demons running hot. Flower kicks his first. And this big crowd for the first of the double header. And full mark to Robin White, Sandy, for getting that ball forward. Can't remember where it came from originally. South Adelaide. Centre bounce. Melbourne fans delirious, but can they go on with it? They lead by 10 points. Burke and Turner. Turner tries to pluck it out of the air. Can't do so. They pile in on top of him. And another bounce. He's done a great job this second half, Turner. Yep, since coming onto the ball. Plenty of aggression, plenty of enthusiasm. He's really showed the way. This time he goes over the top. Oh, White ferociously a tackle. Len Gandini. Saying you didn't want me down there at Virginia Park. I've got a point to prove here. Could it be he'll prove it in this final term? Certainly started well. From the bounce. Wilson caught one in the back. Turner's kick is partly smothered. Richards can't take it. Nor can Bright. Eventually it's Batterston. Towards Lyon. Can't take it with the one hand, but it'll be a free. Six goals at the moment for Gary Lyon. Four of those in that wonderful third term. And the chance now to make it very difficult for Geelong. Who would have thought with Geelong leading by 36 points at halftime, they could be staring a 16-point deficit in the face. And that's exactly what they are. Melbourne leading by 16 points. 17-14 to Geelong, who stopped on 14-16. What a great effort it has been by Gary Lyon. Mossop into the centre bounce. Burke going down to full forward. Delighted Melbourne supporters. Melbourne holding a 16-point advantage. 
You didn't predict that at half time, Sandy. Nor did you, Bob. No, Sandy. <laughs> Mossop getting the ball out, and Morgan takes the free kick. A long left foot towards centre half forward. Apple at the back, got into the back of his opponent. The hand pass comes out, it runs past Fitzgerald. Kicked off the ground by Johnson over on the full. And so Fitzgerald will take the free kick for Geelong. Fitzgerald kicked two goals in the first quarter. It's been pretty quiet since then. But from 50 metres out, Fitzgerald kicks. Short. Goes there looking for Ablett. Forced away that time by Jarrett. Over the boundary line. Good, strong defensive work. And the throw-in will take place. In Geelong's attacking zone. White tries to take it off the top. Here's an opportunity for Fitzgerald. He goes across the ground. And Cordner, can he keep it in? Yes, he can. He's got a paddock to run in. Two. Three bounces. Have another one, David. No, darn it. He says, I'll kick it. And he goes long, looking for Richards. Fisted away from him. It's on centre wing. A chance for Buse. Need support, gets it into the form of Terry Bright. His hurry kick towards half forward. Out comes Burke. Can't take the mark. Waiting down for Geelong is Yates. His kick is off target. And one point goes on the board. Mark Yates has kicked two behinds. And they trail by 15 points. Zanta copped a heavy one early, left the ground somewhat belatedly but is now back on well he ducked then he ducked into that and must be pinged made no attempt so uh, the big boy from Panola Mossop gives it to Scratcher not a happy 200 at the moment particularly if they're going to get rolled a good smother back towards Wilson again well tackled but he got the handball away goes over the line and so a throw in to take place. We've played almost 12 and a half minutes of this final term. Still plenty of time for either side to take the four premiership points. Turner wins it nicely to Healy, and the Demons are out of trouble. Flower, the hand pass over the top. Can't keep it in play, though. Christensen was there, and the throw in to take place on centre wing. Melbourne with a 15-point advantage after trailing by eight points at quarter time, 36 points at half time, coming back to a three point disadvantage at uh, three quarter time, and now they're 15 points in front. Right, forward, tackle, allowed to play on, and Yates takes a courageous mark. Yates trying to get the ball moving forward quickly. Looks for Ablett in the middle of the pack. Ablett got into the back of an opponent, but it matters not because Robin White's there to take the mark. White. Goes short. Hughes is there. The South Australians playing together as Hughes puts it out towards centre wing. Love it. Can't get a favourable bounce. Richards lends support. So too does Johnson. Johnson picks it up. Goes down looking for Lyon. Lyon and oh. Cleve. Cleve almost took a one-hander. Regalo forces it forward. The hand pass comes out to Batterson. He goes back up the ground and Richards takes the mark. Runs oh. around. Plays on. Goes gone. But he's offline. One point the result to Russell Richards. He did the right thing though, Sandy. Yep. Once again, the margin is 16 points. And Geelong must be wondering what on earth has gone wrong. After holding a very, very comfortable 36-point lead. The target is Mossop. His aerial work's been pretty good today, particularly up forward. Goes to centre wing. Christensen and Flower. The victor is Christensen on this occasion. Wobbles one with the left foot in towards the centre. The bounce is a shocker. And Danny Hughes says, I'll thump this. But it goes straight back to Morgan. He finds Neil. They've got to go long and direct. Drum at the back. He's got support. Now here's a chance for Hocking. Can he get clear? No, he can't. He puts Burke under all sorts of pressure. And again, they're out of trouble. I don't know what Geelong are doing. And it will see Melbourne take it towards centre wing. Gandini, the great Gandini is away. Over the top he'll go. Here's one. 
as the shot goes in towards goal and hits the post from Brett Lovett. The one behind the Lovett, one behind the Demons. 118 plays 101. Been a long time since the Dees recorded two successive wins. In fact, I think it was the start of the season. But looks as though at this stage... Well, at the score stage that it is, Sandy, I would say Len Gandini would be a very happy boy. My word, he would be. The margin is 17 points at the moment. The ball drifts into the middle. And the bouncing ball will favour Lyon. And get support from Wilson. Loses out to Hocking. Goes wider to Yates. Their indirectness, short play and handball have proven somewhat costly. Couch. No one, there is no one at home at all. Now Stretch and Zantuck could have stopped for lunch. But they didn't. Hocking. Tiredness starting to show now. Burke in front. Cordner comes over the top. Coach pokes it through towards Drum. He'll have a snap. Onto the right foot he goes and has put it through for a goal. So once again, we find the Cats cut the margin to just 11 points. Still a game here, Sandy, as Damien Drum kicks his first. A vital piece of play right now. If Geelong can get another one very quickly, needless to say, it's only five points the margin then. But... If Melbourne kick a goal, it would just really, about break the spirit. Wouldn't it? I would imagine so. Mossop preparing to come in. Gets the tap. A hand pass from Hughes to Morgan. Morgan towards half forward. Drum couldn't take the mark. The loose ball picked up by Fitzgerald off the side of the boot, but it goes towards Ablett. Lovely and pass. Ablett takes the mark. Beautiful passes, Sandy Gordon. <laughs> Well, now Gary right off Ablett. the side of the boot, <laughs> under the chest. He's kicked three goals, six, Bob, using the drop punt. So, a vital kick. Let's see what he does. A drop punt again, he's goal! He has kicked it, and back come the Cats. The margin is five points here at the MCG. Well, that's exactly what Geelong needed, Sandy. Right now, they would be there with a tail in the air, whilst Melbourne would be just a little bit concerned about two quick goals in a number of minutes. Stretch and Ablett. But Stretch has done a good job since being shifted on to Gary Ablett. Here's the centre bounce. Mossop up against Turner. The next goal could well decide this game. Oh, Bright decided to soccer it instead of claim it. It allows Connolly in. No mark taken by Cleve. The umpire calls play on. A chance for Neil to get clear. He tries to bounce his way around the line. Eventually does get the handball away. But uh, I think it went over the line. So a throw in to take place. We're in the 19th minute of this game. There's less than a kick in it. Five point margin. No one able to break clear. Healy tries to sock it off the ground. Poke forward. I think Terry oh, in the back. Right has given away the free kick. And these last few minutes starting to tell. Is this Len again? Yes. Gandini. I'll tell you what, if he kicks this, he'll be the toast of milk. Fifty metres out. Doesn't have a long run-up. Will poke it right into the square. Big Mossops there, gives it down to Bruns. Goes back towards Gandini and Turner again. No mark taken, play on is the call. Oh, Richards, he says, get out of my way. And they do. And he kicks. Mossop will fly from behind. Affects the spoil. Waiting down is Johnson. Has a hurry shot at goal and has kicked a point. Six points the mark. Don't tell me we're going to have a, a drawn guy. Six points the margin. In a thriller. I'm sure not one person at this ground at half time, Sandy, thought that the score would read six points in favour of Melbourne 20 minutes into the final turn. That right. includes John Norby. <laughs> yes. 
How can you be right? Terry Bright brings the ball back into play. Schultz in the front. Hughes punches the ball away. Taken by Connolly. A hand pass over the top. Lovett does likewise. White trying to tap it on. Morgan does too. Cleave gets a kick in towards the centre. Good play by Cleave. Flower and Christensen. Christensen taps it on, but it goes towards Zantuck. Zantuck trying to shepherd and leave it for Flower. Tackle loses it. Picked up by White. White's hand pass towards Hughes. It's taken away by both of those players. It's back to Robin White again. This time he gets it to Flower. On to Jarrett. Melbourne going forward out towards the wing. Turner diving takes the mark. The big fellow has played an excellent second half in the ruck. Turner's kick, wobbly as it was, found Batterston. Batterson hooks it towards half forward. Almost a mark to Healy. The hand pass comes from Neil. Melbourne through the form of Gandini. He swings it down towards the forward area. Oh, the bounce. In towards the goal square. Coming across is Cleve. Get an awkward bounce. He slips. Richards picks it up. Tackle loses free it. Kick. And his free kick. Held whilst not in possession. Tiggy cuts with Zandy. A brave man too to do it in that position. He's 20 metres out. This could seal the game. We're in the 22nd minute. Well, the umpires let him come around about 10 metres. He's been very generous. Any score will do because the margin is six points. And then young Schultz showing his in, uh, inexperience, not saying the umpire. Yep. Have a look where he is. It's a bit late now. Let's Melbourne see what he does. Chance. Richard's kick has threaded it. It's a goal. And that's the ball game, I fear. For Geelong, Melbourne could be home. A 12-point break, 18-17 to Geelong, 16-17 on sevens, big lead. Russell Richards is really trying his heart and soul for the Demons. A little fortunate to get that one, but luck goes with you when you are as aggressive as Richards was. Mossop gets the tap, kicked off the ground by Hockey. Hughes comes through. Across the ground it goes. It favours Terry Bright. He gathers it in, and Jack Edwards, mate, drives it out towards half forward. Couch is there. Swings onto the right foot. A chance of a score as Couch goes goalward, but he's hooked it way too far, and it's out on the full. Paul Couch, and it's Stephen Stretch now with the ball. Alongside the behind post. The drop punt, a high one. Wilson up from behind. Got into the impact, but took the mark nonetheless. Puts the hand pass out to Zantuck. From half back, Zantuck goes long to half forward. Boss up. Good effort by Boss, but couldn't take the mark. Turner in there trying to tap it back. And I know I'm repeating myself, but Turner's done an excellent job since half time. Sorry, it was Gandini once again. He's done an equally good job. Turner couldn't get it clear. Morgan intercepted by Johnson. Regolo couldn't take it. Recovers. A hand pass across. Love it goes goalward. And he's hooked it. And Brett Love it with two chances in this quarter. Both points. That Melbourne still in control with 13 points the advantage, and that one point could be vital at the end. Uh, Geelong needing three scoring shots at least. Andrew Buse puts it short, finds Terry Bright. 24 minutes have gone as Bright goes short to Neil. Neil, a hand pass over the top, finds Christensen. Christensen across the centre half forward, looking for Burke, and Burke takes the mark. Now, Burke should have the shot at goal. They need one. He's 40 metres out from goal. He goes short and wide and finds Andrew Buse 35 metres out from goal. So he's only about five metres closer to goal. But the big fellow, Burke, probably not wanting to have the shot at this stage. And Andrew Buse now with one goal to his credit. 13 points the margin as Andrew Buse goes goalward. Seven points it is now to Geelong again with a chance. Andrew Buse kicking his second goal 
126 to 119. 18-18 Melbourne, 17-17 Geelong. Time on left to play. Andrew Buse, number 27. The big fellow was Mossop as he prepares to compete against Turner. Mossop gets a tap down. It's, it's sharked away by Healy, though. Brilliant roving by Healy as he goes forward, but Cleves in the way and takes the mark for Geelong. Craig Cleves. 15 metres, brings him up to half back. He doesn't wait for that. Puts it out towards Mossop. Mossop taps the ball on. Christensen's there. So too Healy of Melbourne. The bounce comes out towards Neil. Neil swings back onto the left foot. The hand pass finds Marty Christensen. He gives it across to Andrew Buse. The long one to Mossop. Mossop, an awkward looking hand pass towards White. White takes it, loses it. Picked up by Lovett. The tackle came from Mossop. Now Marty Christensen of Geelong picks the ball up. Puts it across in towards the centre. And the good mark almost taken by Drum. Yates gets it out to Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald now has time to steady. Swings it across. It drops short though. And Stretch takes the relieving mark for Melbourne. Stretch plays on immediately looking for Johnson. And the good mark taken by Johnson in front of Hockey. Melbourne holding a seven point advantage. 26 and a half minutes have gone in the final term. Johnson into the centre. All on his own is Greg Healy. Healy now takes his time, steadies and drives it long. Good play by Healy. Perth comes to Regolo. Regolo's kick smothered. Richards is there for Melbourne though. The hand pass smothered there but off the hand pass of Richards. It's back to Richards again. This time he gets it away. Healy tapped on by Batterston. Wilson used the body well. Hooks it over. It's too high for Lovett. Over the boundary line it goes, the time ticking away. Melbourne's got it at the right end of the ground. Regolo looks like coming off the ground, not on camera. On camera, Lyon to compete against Mossop. Mossop in the front position, Cleve coming across, gets it down towards Boss. From the back line, Boss towards centre wing. Yates the player, and Yates takes the mark for Geelong. Mark Yates. Yates drives it. Ablett, Jarrett taps the ball down, punched on by Fitzgerald, intercepted by Stretch, knocked on by Fitzgerald again, Couch puts it wide, Marty Christensen from directly in front, 45 metres out. One point the result, one goal the margin. Maybe it was the best thing that could have happened if Geelong can take it from this kickoff. Cordner. From the kickoff, goes long and wide. Flower in front. Christensen tried to mark from behind. A foolish thing to do in this stage. Flower now, a 15 metre penalty. You must never try to mark from behind. Robbie Flower towards half forward. Richards, it's punched away from behind by Schultz. Batterson. Over the line it goes. 28 and a half minutes have gone. One kick between the sides. One goal in favour of Melbourne. Mossop and Turner. Mossop gets a tap down. Christensen can't get the ball clear. Turner takes it. He can't get it out. And the bounce will take place on centre wing, outer side of the ground. 29 minutes have gone. One goal a margin. Melbourne the leader. From the bounce, hit Wilson, gets it out to Gandini, he's kicked down towards the forward area, Healy gets the bounce, hooks it back towards Lyon, Lyon can't take it, but it's a free kick to Lyon, Kiggy touch with the mind. I certainly would not have played the free kick, what else could Cleve do but to try and punch the ball away, an umpire side bottom decided to play it, and Gary Lyon, the chance of sealing the game and kicking his eighth goal. Lyon from 30 metres out. Seven goals won so far. Melbourne with a six-point lead. 
as Gary Lyon puts the ball forward. Seven points to the margin and seven goals to kicked by Gary Lyon. But still two scores needed by Geelong. Seven points in favour of the Demons. 30 minutes have gone as Robert Neal puts it forward. Over the head of Hughes.